I think reform and opening up uh, began in 79 for a couple of reasons. First of all, Mao had died. Uh, there was a tremendous desire to return uh, to more political stability and uh, to a more growth-oriented uh, economic uh, strategy. Secondly, uh, as the country began to open up to the outside, China's top leaders, I think, really began to appreciate much more thoroughly the extent to which China had fallen behind compared to some of its other East Asian neighbors. Uh, some of them began to travel in the region, and I think they realized that in relative terms, China had become a very poor country. Well, I think the original goals of the policy were to c reverse some very important declines. Food availability in China in 1978 was actually somewhat below where it had been in the mid-1950s. So China had gone on for 30 years with declining food consumption, declining living standards, and so that put a tremendous priority on trying to improve productivity in the agricultural sector. And that's really where reforms began in a few provinces where courageous leaders uh, started to allow local initiatives which essentially dismantled the collective uh, commune structure and returned China to something like private farming. That had a tremendous uh, effect of boosting productivity and output that really was extremely important in the early years of economic reform. Well, I think the policy of reform uh, really has transformed China. The economy is dozens and dozens of times larger than it was when reform began in the late 1970s. Hundreds of millions of people that were living in abject poverty with inadequate food, clothing, and shelter have been lifted out of poverty by the rapid growth uh, that has occurred. And of course, China has become much more open. Tens of millions, if not more, of Chinese people are traveling abroad every year. There's a great deal more knowledge about, about the outside uh, world. So I think it'd be very difficult to find a transformation as profound as that which has occurred in China over the last 40 years, a transformation that has social, economic uh, dimensions. Well, I think it's important to recognize that industrial policy in China you know, in some respects can be traced back to the planning system that was adopted from the Soviet Union uh, in, the, in the 1950s. They had a state planning commission, they drew up goals, they allocated resources to achieve some of the targets in the plan. That began to fade away uh, after 1978. The scope of the plan diminished. The amount of resources that were controlled by the state began to shrink. The private sector became more important. But sometime uh, around the global financial crisis, or maybe even a little bit earlier, they began to have a, a program for development of science and technology, and that led later to this Made in China 2025, which was a much more ambitious uh, industrial policy that was adopted roughly in the first year after Xi Jinping came into power, roughly in 2013. So they've moved back towards a system in which state allocation of resources is more important and the economy is driven by targets and priorities established uh, in Beijing rather than uh, the result of decisions of more autonomous private firms. Well, I wouldn't say economic reform has ended. It has reversed in certain respects. It is still moving ahead here and there. The financial sector has had some reform in recent years, but certainly reform has slowed down. I wouldn't say it has ended because China's always experimented and they go back and forth. Sometimes reforms move ahead more rapidly. Sometimes they slow down. You know, this is captured in the Chinese phrase of, you know, crossing the river by feeling the stones. So I think reform could resume on a more accelerated pace, but I think uh, it will require some catalytic event. I, it's hard to see now what 
force, uh, what circumstances would cause reforms to come strongly back on track? Well, um, in the midst of this trade dispute between uh, China and the United States, I think it's important that we do not overestimate the extent to which China is dependent on international trade. I think there's a view in the administration that China is more vulnerable because they export more to us than we export uh, to them. But China's dependence on exports has declined dramatically over the last 10 years. They no longer are running a big trade surplus. Exports relative to GDP have declined significantly. More and more of the growth of the Chinese economy is being generated by domestic demand, particularly consumption, which has become the most important driver of China's economic growth. So the idea that China is going to accede to any demands that are placed on it by the United States government because they're so dependent on the trade relationship with the United States, I think is uh, a somewhat uh, misleading uh, approach.